Hey everyone, it's Dale again, and before we get going, uh, diving into the strategies behind each of the networks, I feel like we should take a step back and see where uh, the big boys and big girls are at this stage of the uh, social media landscape. So uh, we're going to walk through a little bit of history here, a little bit about current statistics and the major players that are involved in the social media game in 2016. And throughout this, I'm going to be mixing in some statistics from the Pew Research Center. Uh, this typically hits sometime right before fall, so we should have some new statistics as soon as uh, the rest of you are able to start teaching this class or our next round of this class in fall of 2016. So the numbers I have right now were released in August of 2015. And uh, like I said, those will be updated as we move along. So let's start first with Facebook. And uh, Facebook was, of course, launched uh, primarily by Mark Zuckerberg. He is by far the face of the company. But a couple of others involved with this, Eduardo Saverin, who, if you watch The Social Network, he's the villain of the movie. Uh, Chris Hughes uh, went on to become part of President Obama's team in 2008. And Duskin Moskovitz as well. And if you remember, it launched as The Facebook, which was what it was called at Harvard, which was like their yearbook. Uh, which again was the goal of it. It's crazy to think that Facebook's now 12 years old. So it, it is the uh, most established of the social networks that we think of right now. Uh, like I said, it originally started at Harvard. It expanded to hundreds of other universities uh, before 2006, and that's when anyone could join. Uh, that's also a big year because that's the year that the news feed launched. So we're going to be talking a lot in some of the upcoming modules about the algorithm involved with Facebook and why you see what you see when you see it. Uh, the newsfeed is the major deal, major force behind that. Uh, branding began on Facebook in, 20, uh, in 2007 when they launched business pages. Uh, and we mostly think of the like button, or at least I do. That's one of the first things I think of when I think of Facebook. But that came around five years after it was created. So the like button created in 2009, and of course here in just the past couple of weeks, Facebook launched Reactions, which expands the like button to now include a love button, uh, an angry, a laughing. Uh, so we have different types of emotional reactions to them. And Facebook went public in May 2012, so it got a head start on the uh, public valuation uh, run here that we had with some of the social networks and uh, Facebook still very, very profitable at this point. Uh, I want to highlight Sheryl Sandberg. She is the COO of Facebook. Uh, she came over from Google, joined in, 20, in 2008, and she is the first woman on the board. So when we th say or we talk about female executives in the tech world, Sheryl Sandberg is almost always either the first or the second to come up. She's incredibly powerful and incredibly important at Facebook, uh, so she's a important person to know of. She also wrote a book called Lean In, which is widely viewed as a, widely viewed as a, uh, a really great read in terms of business practice and strategy. So here's where Facebook stands as of today. It has 1.59 billion monthly active users, and almost all of those are on mobile. So for a long time, Facebook really struggled with mobile. When the iPad first launched a couple years ago, uh, Facebook didn't have any mobile apps and Facebook actually kind of refused to have a mobile app. So other companies, third parties were building apps, making it possible for you to use Facebook on your smartphone or on your iPad. Facebook has stood a total 180 and now has a very mobile first uh, not just user experience, but a business plan as well. Uh, so that's been really cool to see. Uh, Facebook now has about a billion daily active users. And one thing that's really important when you talk to your students and you ask them how many of y'all use Facebook every day, uh, there's a disconnect that I found with students and using Facebook. Uh, they think of using Facebook as posting. And while I would agree with them that that is using Facebook, Browsing Facebook as well is also using Facebook. So I'm always very clear when I talk to them and I ask them, how many of y'all use Facebook and like, or use Facebook every single day? You know, I'll get a couple of hands and I say, well, how many of y'all look at Facebook every day? And almost the entire class will raise their hands. So it's really important to differentiate between those and let them know that is considered using Facebook. 
just by going on and flipping through your feed, scrolling through your feed on a daily basis. Facebook made about 18 billion in revenue last year, and that's up almost 50%. So uh, the death declarations that you hear a lot of people say about Facebook could not be further from the truth. Facebook is doing quite well. It is still growing. Uh, it is still a very important player in terms of branding. It is the most important social network in terms of branding. Yeah, the death knell. <laughs> the death knell was sounded way prematurely for Facebook. Um, here's what those Pew statistics found. Uh, they found that about 70% of Facebook users check it daily. So, uh, you know, again, just looking at it counts because that means you're being exposed to ads, which is what Facebook really wants you to do. Uh, let's take a look at Twitter. Not as successful since it's gone public, but uh, Twitter launched in March of 2006, so it just had its 10th anniversary a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Jack Dorsey, Evan Williams, Biz Stone, and Noah Glass. Uh, Jack sent out the actual first tweet, which Twitter was known as TWTTR back then, so that actually is the first tweet that you see right there. Twitter didn't really hit it big until South by Southwest in Austin in 2007. So it took about a year uh, before Twitter really exploded onto the scene at South by. Uh, Evan stepped down in 2010, uh, but he still owns a big chunk of the company, and you'll still see him. Uh, he was part of the 10th anniversary, so uh, he's still you know on the board, I believe. So he's still involved in certain ways, uh, but he is no longer in charge. Uh, he has moved on to other things, and the uh, company went public in 2013 and has not done well in terms of its stock price. It's, it's been a roller coaster ride for Twitter. Still trying to find ways to become a profitable company. So that's one thing that Twitter has moving forward. It really needs to work on, obviously. So Jack Dorsey, as we mentioned, was one of the co-founders of Twitter. He is now the CEO again. Uh, he had stepped away from the company for a while because he went on to uh, create Square, which... You've probably used quite a bit, even if you don't necessarily know what it's called. Square is the little um, plug-in adapter on the top of phones or iPads where you can swipe credit cards. So if you've ever been to the Apple Store and bought anything at the Apple Store, they all use Square. Uh, a lot of companies now also use Square to handle payments and purchases. So Square, very successful. Uh, Jack came back on an interim basis to become the CEO uh, here in the past couple of months when Dick Costello was forced out and he decided to go ahead and stay on as CEO. So he's now running both Twitter and Square at the same time. In terms of statistics, Twitter has about 320 million monthly active users. Somewhere statistics somehow say that about 500 million tweets are sent every day. You might see some different numbers on that, but the important thing to think about is 80% of all those active users are on mobile. So uh, Twitter, again, has always been a very mobile-first uh, company. So that's, again, a very strong thing. Now, Twitter did make $2.2 in revenue last year, but operated at a net loss of $521 million. So when we talk about uh, Twitter stock price being a roller coaster and changing CEOs in the middle of the year, things along that spectrum, uh, it's reflected in the, or it's probably based on the amount of money that Twitter is still losing. So still trying to come up with that killer advertising business model that Facebook's perfected at this point. Twitter really has struggled. I've done some advertising through Twitter for some clients and one, the user experience for an advertiser is not the greatest and two, don't see anywhere type the or return that you get from a Facebook advertising campaign. So Twitter still has a ways to go when it comes to making money. Uh, according to that Pew study, about 38% of Twitter's users check it daily. So uh, you can see some of the demographics here in terms of Twitter's audience base. All right, let's take a look at Instagram. Uh, Instagram, as you'll find out if you uh, quiz your classes as to which social networks are their favorite. Instagram will probably be number two in that list. Snapchat will probably be the first. So Instagram has become quite popular over the past couple of years. Um, it was founded by Kevin Systrom, who is there on the right. 
and Mike Krieger. Kevin is the face of the company. It launched in 2010, so about six years ago, or about five and a half years ago, uh, but it was named App of the Year at the end of 2011, so very quickly became very popular. Uh, in 2012, Facebook bought Instagram for about a billion dollars, which was seen as astronomical at the time. And people were actually kind of laughing at Facebook for paying so much for Instagram, and now it just looks like an absolute steal. A couple of big progressions with Instagram since the purchase by Facebook. Uh, Instagram video launched in 2013. Uh, started allowing advertising in October of 2013, so Instagram now has a way to make money. Uh, Hyperlapse was a time-lapse feature that launched in 2014, and then here in the past couple of weeks, we've had some big developments. Uh, one, Instagram said it was going to move to an algorithm, much like Facebook. Well, not much like Facebook, but kind of like Facebook in terms of how you see the content on Instagram. There will be some major differences between Facebook and Instagram's algorithm, and I'll go over those as we get to those modules. Um, so that's that just actually just started this past week, so some people are already seeing the Instagram algorithm. And then Instagram also just this week allowed 60-second videos. So before this, Instagram videos were allowed to be 15 seconds. Now you can have up to a 60-second video on Instagram. You can also now see the number of people who are watching your videos on Instagram, which is a nice analytics tool that didn't used to be there. And again, that's something that's been really recent with Instagram. This is the first uh, post on Instagram. Kevin made it. Uh, you can see a nice flip-flop shot, but let's all focus on the dog instead. Uh, so Instagram's come a long way in terms of photo quality because that's what we associate most with Instagram is these beautiful, uh, gorgeous photos that we take. Uh, here's where Instagram stands in terms of users. It has about 400 million monthly active users. Uh, but here are the big numbers. More than 40 billion photos are shared so far, and about 80 million are shared every single day. Uh, and of those 80 million photos, Instagram gets about 3.5 billion likes every day on those. Instagram is also very popular outside of the United States. Uh, only about 25% of the users are here in the United States. So it very much is a global social network, much like Facebook. Um, and you can see the return rate is much higher with Instagram than it is on Twitter. About 60% of its users check Instagram every single day. So if you have kids, you know what Snapchat is. Hopefully you know what Snapchat is regardless. Uh, but Snapchat is uh, definitely the uh, kind of darling of the social media world right now. Um, a lot of people think that Snapchat is really new, but it's not. It's been around for several years. Uh, but it's now just recently been getting a lot of attention from brands and from journalists. Uh, so I, I tend to think that's why it's now just kind of entering the common conversation. Um, created by Evan Spiegel, who was on the right, and Bobby Murphy on the left. And it was originally called Peekaboo, which might explain the ghost icon that comes along with Snapchat. They renamed it that in 2011. Uh, my story launched in October of 2013, so this was a way for users to post to Snapchat and also post it publicly as opposed to just sending to individual friends. So that was a big deal. And Snapchat has very much doubled down on its own success. Uh, it has had several opportunities to go and cash out, uh, most famously in 2013 when it turned down $3 billion from Facebook. So remember, Facebook spent a billion dollars on Instagram, uh, offered three times that much to buy Snapchat. Snapchat said, nope, we're good, and uh, has continued to kind of uh, build its own course in terms of doing that. Um, Discover is a feature on Snapchat that allows branded content. So uh, that launched last year. It's about a year old now, a little bit more than a year old. Um, not quite sure how successful it is but it is getting more and more brands on board. So it launched originally with, with brands like Vice and ESPN and CNN and the like. Uh, it has now opened that up to even more and some niche brands. Um, and so brands are still clamoring to be a part of Snapchat. I just personally don't know how many people are actually looking at the Discover content that's on there. They're, it's beautiful content. So they're producing it specifically for Snapchat I just don't know how many young people are actually going out of their way to find 
that Discover tab or to find the brands on Discover. Uh, here are the demographics for Snapchat, or as Pew called it, mobile messaging apps, uh, but it's Snapchat in particular. And the big number to look at is right there, the 18 to 29, 41% uh, of 18 to 29 year olds use Snapchat. And I would guess that number is actually really low. Um, when you ask your classes how many of them are on Snapchat, almost every single one of them says they are. So I'm guessing that 41% has jumped hugely in the past year. Hopefully you avoid snaps like this when you're giving a talk about Snapchat in class. And uh, Snapchat has 100 million daily users, so a lot of those other networks are measured in, in, month, in uh, active monthly users. Snapchat measures it in daily users, which is a much bigger deal. And 65% of those 100 million cre actually create content every single day, so that's huge. Um, we talked about the popularity with young people. Uh, it was 41% of 18 to 29. It's actually 60% of 13 to 34 year olds. So uh, it gets more popular the younger the demo gets. I have a 12 year old nephew and he's already been on Snapchat for two years. So uh, it's continuing to get younger and younger. Um, Snapchat also has 7 billion views every single day. So uh, yes, those views can be very short. Snapchat counts anything over a second as a view. But the users have to hit play or have to click on the uh, the story itself. So somebody actually has gone on to say, I want to watch that piece of content. Uh, like we said, Snapchat has uh, rebuffed offers for buyouts so far, and it seems to be working because it's now valued at around $16 billion. So it's probably going to happen sooner or later, and it's probably still going to be Facebook or Google or somewhere along those lines. But uh, Snapchat's bet on it, betting on itself has really paid off, at least so far. Um, let's take a look at Pinterest. Several of y'all mentioned that you're on Pinterest, so that's cool. Um, Pinterest was founded in 2010, so again, it's not anything really new in terms of tech, you know, in a tech timeline. 2010 seems to be eons ago. Um, ben Silberman, who you see here, he's actually kind of the, he's the face of Pinterest, so he created it with a couple other guys. Um, it was originally called Tote, or the idea behind Pinterest was originally called Tote, which he wanted really as a kind of catalog for your phone, but then they refocused it and changed the company to Pinterest when they started focusing on these collections. So you think of the boards that Pinterest has. Um, I heard him mention at South by a couple years ago that he considers Pinterest the 2015-2016 version of when we used to tear pages out of magazines or catalogs and hang them up in our locker or pin them up on a pin board, which is actually where Pinterest got the name from. So the mission of Pinterest is to let you find all this stuff online and then go offline and do those things that you love. So if you love to cook, find recipes on Pinterest. If you want to redecorate your house, find ideas or inspiration on Pinterest and then actually go do it from there. So that's the, the mindset behind Pinterest. Um, this was actually the first pin, as they're called. Um, nothing earth-shattering, but thought you might want to see it. And uh, Pinterest has a lot of female users, so it is getting more male users as it uh, as it grows. But Pinterest is still very much uh, a female-driven uh, social network. So, eighty-five percent of its users are women, and of the people who actually pin women make up about 90% of that audience. Very, very strong on mobile, as you've probably noticed as we talk about all these, mobile is the driving force between all these. Pinterest is also a very, as a private company, uh, but a very highly valued company, so its valuation is at around 11 billion right now. Uh, Pinterest, again, has, uh, I imagine, there are plenty of offers being made to try and buy Pinterest because you think you has a very strong female audience that would be very attractive to advertisers and other companies. Um, about 27% of Pinterest users check it daily. The one thing that we do see in the analytics with Pinterest is that more so than the other networks, when Pinterest users sit down to use Pinterest, they use Pinterest. So they're using it for a very long time Whereas someone who gets on Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter might check in and bounce 
uh, on Pinterest, they're sitting down and dedicating an hour or two or even 30 minutes to Pinterest, which is a very strong thing. Um, we're all very familiar with YouTube, but I want to show you a little bit of history. I don't know that we necessarily consider this a social network, but it is an incredibly important network. Uh, it was founded in 2005, Chad Hurley, kind of the face of the company. Uh, Google bought it very early on for $1.65 billion, which again is an absolute steal. Uh, you can only imagine how much YouTube would go for now, 10 years later. Uh, I Man, I can't even imagine how much YouTube would sell for now. Um, YouTube has more than a billion users, and anywhere from 100 to 300 hours of video are uploaded every minute on YouTube. So that may not be great video, but anywhere from 100 to 300 hours uploaded, and more than half of YouTube's views are on mobile. Again, I want to highlight a female executive. Susan Vachisky is the CEO of YouTube, and her sister actually just divorced one of the Google co-founders in the past week, so her family very connected to Google. Um, she was actually one of Google's first employees, so she was employee number six, uh, 16, as they're called at Google, and she was also the first female executive at Google, so a very successful executive in the field. Vine is a short video app, a uh, short video network. Um, it's actually owned by Twitter, so Twitter bought the company pretty early on and launched it in 2013. It's six second videos, so I know the joke when Vine came around was how short can our attention span actually get, and we're still getting shorter. So, um, you know, some snaps are one second long. So, um, Vine says it's about 1.5 billion daily loops. That means videos that are played over and over again. Uh, so, that's very successful. Vine has, in a way, become kind of like the sports play-by-play. -play. If you think of highlights, a lot of those are made through Vine, and they're embedded naturally or natively into Twitter. So um, Twitter owning Vine has been a, a big payoff uh, in terms of Vine usage, and it really has created a new breed of celebrities. Uh, here's one of the biggest ones. Zach King is a viral video producer, and he uses Vine... Uh, to produce a lot of videos like that, which are kind of uh, sleight-of-eye uh, sleight uh, videos. And he has millions and millions of followers and has uh, business coming to him every single day. Many of y'all have used P uh, Periscope as well, uh, probably the newest of the major social networks. Um, the story of Periscope, though, actually begins with its rival, so something called Meerkat launched last year at South by Southwest in 2015, and it was a live video app, and uh, it, it launched quite well at, Facebook, at South by Southwest. It was quite popular, but I remember hearing rumblings of Twitter's going to have something bigger coming out very soon. So right about the time of South by Southwest, Twitter actually made the announcement that it had acquired Periscope and was going to launch it in a couple of days. And about two weeks later, it did launch Periscope. And in 10 days, it hit a million users. Now, it's basically a live broadcast. So it's been really uh, effective for newsrooms in particular because we're very, especially TV newsrooms, are very adapt with live broadcasting. So they were some of the first uh, early, uh, early adopters of it. Uh, what it did was it essentially killed Meerkat. So, um, as I say there, poor Meerkat. Periscope has very much dominated the uh, landscape when it comes to the live broadcasting apps. A uh, couple of cool announcements that Periscope has made recently. There's a uh, partnership with GoPro that you can now stream from your new GoPro cameras. So what that really means is thinking at it from an even bigger picture, if someone has a drone with a new GoPro on it, you can stream live to Periscope, which is embedded natively into a tweet. So realistically, you can stream live from your drone to Twitter, which is a really cool aspect uh, for people looking to do that. So big things happening with Periscope. And then we have our poor friend Google+, Plus, uh, which finally died its uh, dramatic and very, very slow death last year. Uh, Google is <laughs> Google does a lot of really great things. Social networks, not Google's strong suit. So this is about uh, failure number four in terms of 
Google trying to launch a Facebook or a Twitter competitor. Um, many people just assume that Google will eventually buy Twitter and forget trying to develop its own social network. One thing that's really important to keep in mind if you do end up teaching this advanced social media class is obviously these statistics change on a daily basis, or maybe not on a daily basis, but you do need to up the, update them quite frequently. So that's a look at where the networks stand as of right now. And what I want you to not worry about is that you don't have a lot of experience on these. Some of you do have a lot of experience, but some of those you may not have heard of yet or you've never used yet. So what I encourage you to do is try these, look them up, maybe ask your kids if you have kids, which ones they're using, have a, a real conversation with them about them, and then start trying them. Uh, because there is no easier way to get into the mindset and the strategy of these than to use it. It's going to be really hard to talk about strategy of Snapchat if you're not on Snapchat and not using Snapchat, or at least watching Snapchat and seeing what's being produced there. So uh, don't worry about it if you you know are at that stage where you've not done it yet, but now's the time to start experimenting. Uh, so here's what we're going to do moving forward. Um, there will be a real quick quiz, so we'll have a link underneath the video on my website. And a quick note on the, the uh, quizzes, if you want to see feedback from the questions, there's a little feedback link at the top of the quiz in the upper left-hand corner, or you can go to the tracks page, which you're all a part of if you signed up for the workshop, and you can see your results there. So Take the quiz, and I'll have a couple of associated links on the uh, side of these videos, but not a whole lot of additional reading. And that's our first module on advanced social media. Next time, we're going to start talking about best practices, and then in the upcoming module, we'll move on to Facebook and start tackling the behemoth that means or that associates with uh, branding and content and strategy on Facebook.